Hey, what's up you guys jack jack here so today i'm gonna show you guys how to build a advanced red versus blue map on fortnite creative so there's definitely been a lot of red versus blue maps out there you know there's probably thousands of red versus blue maps out there but on fortnite right now there is a community creation a featured map that was called advanced red versus blue by the slurp and I'm going to show you guys how to build a map similar to this. Not exactly an exact duplicate because I don't want to, you know, copy what he built. But I'll show you guys how to build a good red versus blue map. If you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure you guys smash the like button. Subscribe if you guys are new. Let's get right into Fortnite Creative. We're going to create a new island. I'm going to select the Wasteland Island. You can use whatever island you like, to be honest. And I'm going to name it Advanced Red versus Blue. All right, once you're in your island, I suggest going to my island and switching the time of day and settings. People that are subscribed, they obviously would know this already. I do this a lot. Time of day, 4 p.m. Okay, so while you're in your island, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into galleries. In galleries, we're gonna look for, also of course, gallery red and blue. We're gonna select these and put them in our hotbar. Like so. Now, obviously, we're going to need these because we're making a red versus blue. First thing we're going to do, we're going to grab the solid red wall. You can actually see that one of them has a black side. We want the solid red color. So we're going to take this. We're going to place it down. Next, do the same thing with the blue wall. Same thing. One of them has a black side. We're going to take the solid blue wall. Place it next to the red wall. On the left side, we have the blue. On the right side, we have the red side. We're going to go in galleries again, and we're going to find... Structures gallery reflective black. We're gonna take that. All right, so from here, we're gonna grab our wall. We're gonna put it in between the blue and the red wall. So down in the middle here will be our divider. It will be all black. All right, so from there, what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab one side and we're gonna build it out 11 times. There you go, 11 times. And do the same thing with the other side. Build it out 11 times. So if you count all of our squares, it'll actually be 25 squares long. Next thing we'll do, go back to the galleries and find our floor. From our reflective black gallery. Take that. We're going to go ahead and place it in the middle. And bring it out outwards. We're going to build it out 17 times. The next thing we'll do, we'll select the blue wall black wall and the red wall using the right on the d-pad on controller we're gonna build it upwards and we're gonna build it up 20 times just like so 9 10 11 12 13 14 18 19 20 21. just like so next what we're gonna do we're gonna copy one row of walls like so take it from the bottom and place it on the other side do the same thing with the other color. And also the black color in the middle. You can also copy the walls. Grab one end. And place it in the other wall on the opposite side. Then obviously do it again with the opposite color. Next, fill in the walls. it on the other side go back to the galleries grab your colored floors then fill in the bottom of your arena with the blue and the red floor you can use the same technique with the select button copy the floors and then you can save some time obviously do the same thing with the other color on the opposite side Once you're done, it should look something like this. Next, what we're gonna do is a little bit more complicated, so try to keep up with me. Two devices, we're gonna find the hover platform. With the hover platform, go to one of your sides. We're gonna place it in the middle of our arena. And also two squares away from our wall. Next, what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna measure. Using our blueprint, we'll actually build upwards. And we're gonna measure up to 16. 
We're actually going to build wood walls just to get a good measurement. After you measured up to 16, we're going to take our platform. We'll place our platform at the 16th height. Once you've done that, you can actually delete the, the walls. From up here, we're going to grab our floors for that side. We're going to place it down on this platform and we're going to build a square. The square is going to be a 5x5. Five five. So once you're done, it should look something like this. So what we're doing right now, we're building a spawn area. Next, we can build our walls. I'm gonna get a bit creative with this. I'm gonna go back to the galleries and I'm gonna grab this black wall here. And I'm gonna make a second floor with it. Like so. Next, I'm gonna take my gloss floor, the reflective black, and I'm gonna use this as a ceiling. So once you're done, it should look something like this. Next, we need a doorway. We're going to use this doorway here and we're going to place it in the middle of our spawn area like so then i'm going to grab a floor and build on the outside at the front of the doorway then i need ramps i'm going to grab a ramp at the galleries i'll place the ramps at the, the very edge next from the inside i'll actually make a launch area it'll be a launch pad two devices two launch pad i'm going to place these on the corners like so. I'll delete the wall at the very top. And I'll grab a ramp. And I'll place it on the inside facing outwards. Like so. And then I'll build a wall around it. Make it look a little bit nicer. And there you go. Now the launch pad will obviously be used if you want to get further. Two devices. We're going to get our speed boost. We're going to take a few of these. And we're going to place it on our ramps. Now, if you like, you can actually use another item. The bouncer. It's all up to you. Make it a little bit more similar to the advanced red versus blue. It's all up to you. You can use whatever you like. I'll just put it in the middle. Why not? So the difference between the bouncer and the speed boosts. If you hit the bouncer, it launches you upwards. And obviously, it's a gradual descent. If you have the speed boost, it just throws you down. And... Obviously, there's no fall damage, so you get down here faster. And yeah, three different options, three different ways to get into the arena. Another thing we'll do that is a option. If you want, you can have a mutator zone. In devices, mutator zone. So with the mutator zone, we're going to place it at the top in the middle. Here are the options. Allow weapon fire. You want to turn this to yes, so people can shoot each other in this area. Allow building. Turn that to no. This will stop people from building in this area. I recommend this so people don't build like in front of the spawn area. You don't want this to happen. You know, there's there's a better chance of people being spawn camped. Zone width five. Zone depth five. Height four. Enabled VFX. Turn that to no. All right. So from the outside, you can actually see the mutator. You're able to shoot your weapon in this area, but you can't build. Next, in your spawn area, we're going to go and select the mutator zone once again. So I'm facing the doorway. I'm going to place it in the middle of our spawn area. Here are the options. Allow weapon fire, yes. Allow building, no. Zone width, 5. Zone depth, 5. Zone height, 2. Enable VFX, no. So once again, in this mutator, you're able to shoot your weapon, but you can't build. So from the outside, your spawn area should look something like this. So from the inside of the spawn area, you can actually design this however you like. A very important device, we're going to go to devices, we're going to get our player spawn. We're going to place down one player spawn. Now max players you can have on a map right now, unless you can publish maps, is 16. So we're going to have 8 players per team. In the options for the player spawn, we're going to have this set to 1. Use this island star, I'm going to turn this to no. I'm actually going to make a quick pre-game lobby just to show you guys, you know, the basics of how to make a pre-game lobby on this video. Dizzle during game? Nope. All right, from there, we're going to place down eight player spawns for the eight players per team. There we go. 
Now say you want a default inventory when you do spawn in your game mode real quickly because this is a well-known thing on Fortnite Creative. We're gonna go to the team settings and inventory. We're gonna place this on the top of our spawn area. And this will actually be set for all the players in our game mode. And whatever you place, whatever you drop into this device will actually be for every player in your game mode. So for myself, I'll have a purple pump, then a blue AR for default inventory. There we go. Now, obviously you want to give people options. So what we're going to use is a vending machine in devices, vending machine. So the idea is we're going to have one vending machine off to the side that we're not going to use. We're just going to copy it anytime we do need a vending machine. And then we're going to place items, consumables, weapons, whatever you like in this. For an example, I'll use different rarities of pump shotgun and I'll drop all three of these in the vending machine. So this will be my pump shotgun vending machine. Now there is an option to make it so in order to get things from the vending machine, you got to use gold, you got to use resources. Now I might make a tutorial on that if you guys want to learn how to do that. Make sure you guys leave a like on this video and I'll make a tutorial on how to do that and make a gold system on Fortnite Creative. But to keep it really simple, I'll have it so it's, you know, it's free items. You can just, you know, take whatever you like from the vending machines. After that, you can, you know, you can focus on placing down the vending machines and decide what you want on your game mode. <laughs> Now there's gonna be a handful of different vending machines. So I don't wanna, you know, waste everyone's time with showing you guys all that. We're gonna skip all that and go into the future and then we'll continue from there. But again, you guys design your vending machines, design your spawn area, however you like. Okay, we are back and uh, yeah, we got our vendors together. It, it took a while. It definitely took a while. It took probably 30 minutes, 20 minutes, but I went ahead and made different sections of weapons and consumables. Over here, we got like, I swear, like every single shotgun in the game, but only legendary to rare. We got some heals, we got some mobility items, we got another section here which is assault rifles. We got sniper stuff, we got explosives, overpowered stuff, and we got bow stuff. We got pistols if people are into that type of thing. Then we got SMGs. But yeah, it's, it's all up to the builder. You guys can decide however you want to design your game mode. It's all up to you. All right, we're gonna work on something else here. So we gotta go and build our other player area on the opposite side, the blue side. Now we're actually not gonna do everything like manually again. We're not gonna build it manually again. We're actually gonna copy it. And once we copy the red side and place it over here, we'll just have to replace the walls and you know make sure it's the blue side. And that'll obviously save a lot of time. But this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go and copy the hover platform. We're gonna go on the opposite side. We gotta be two squares away from our arena wall we also got to make sure this is in the middle of our arena so it's lined up in the middle of our arena and then we're going to build up 16 times 15 15 16 so this should be leveled with the other side take the platform place it at the very top along the wall that looks about right we're going to take the blue floor and we're going to make a five by five platform delete the wooden wall Next, I'm going to build a wall on the left side of our spawn area. I'm going to go to our spawn area that's already completed. I'm going to select everything, every single piece from this player spawn area. First from the outside, like so. And then the ceiling. Then finally, the vending machines. Now the limit to the amount of pieces you can select is a hundred. So if you run out, you know, you selected a hundred pieces, you're gonna have to copy the rest later. So I'm gonna grab the left wall, like so, and I'm gonna bring it on the opposite side. Push it away from me using the, the up on the D-pad. And all I'm gonna do is line it up with the other platform, like so. So from the inside, you got some vending machines that are down. We're gonna have to copy the rest and, you know, place them over here. While I'm here, I might as well copy the player spawns. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to copy the wall, grab it, place it on the other side, just like so. Now from the inside, you got a few walls that we got to replace and make it blue. Be honest, that red and blue combination looks really cool. So all we're going to do is replace the walls with, uh, you know, that side's color. Now here's a little trick because sometimes when you try to place or replace a wall, it doesn't work, as you can see. You can actually rotate it using the, the RB button or the R1 button on controllers. If you're on mouse and keyboard, I have no idea. You're gonna have to figure it out on the left side of the screen. It's just rotate clockwise. And then you place it, rotate it again, and then place it again. 
so we don't have that black piece at the bottom and just keep on placing the walls down we gotta replace our ramps and our doorways so to our galleries we're gonna take our ramp and our doorways We're actually going to select both of them, save some time. We're going to place it down. And then we're going to replace the doorway. Same thing, we got to rotate it. Then place it again. Rotate it twice, pretty much. And fix the inside. And there you go. Alright, so we saved a lot of time. We definitely saved a good, like, 30, 40 minutes. Probably even longer if you wanted to, you know, redo the vending machines. I don't think that would be a good idea. <laughs> Hopefully you guys got that done and you know got your spawn areas together. Very important, we're gonna go through these player spawns and change the settings to two instead of one. Now if you want, you can just delete all the player spawns and only have one and just copy it, you know, eight times. I'm just gonna go through the settings and just change it to two. But again, very important, you don't want, you know, someone to spawn in here that's not on this team because obviously they'll get ganked. Also, it would be really awkward, you know, spawning and then you have a opponent next to you. You don't want that to happen. So make sure all these are set to team two. All right, so we're gonna fill in the devices. We had our boost pads, we also had our bounce pad, and we also had a mutator. We had two mutators actually. So it'll look like this. Also, we need our launch pads. I already have launch pads in my inventory, but uh, again, you'll find all that in the devices. Mutator, boost, bouncer. All right, there we go. All right, now the mutator. Here are the options once again. Allow weapon fire, yes. Allow building, no. Zone width, seven. Zone depth, five. Zone height, four. Enable view effects, no. Another thing we have to do, I totally forgot, mutator from the devices and we're gonna place it inside our spawn area face the doorway here are the options allow weapon fire yes allow building nope zone width five zone depth five zone height two enable vfx no all right so in the settings for the mutator i'll actually adjust it a little bit so you might want to go back to your red side and change the mutator settings as well I was thinking the mutator might be a bit too small, so we're gonna increase the width here. So I just bumped it up to seven. Now I'm pretty happy with it. The idea is when people are building, this mutator will stop people from building in this area, but I wanna prevent people from being able to build in that area from the outside. Right here, you won't be able to build on that ramp. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. All right, so next thing we're gonna do, what we'll be doing is placing down our barriers. Instead of placing these, these walls actually take up a lot of memory, we're gonna place down a full barrier, which actually makes a boundaries around our arena. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so first thing, we're gonna go at the bottom of one of your spawn areas. We're gonna go to devices, we're gonna find barrier. We're gonna go underneath, we're gonna grab a floor, we're gonna place it in the middle just underneath where our bouncer is. And we're gonna place down our barrier facing inwards, like so. Here are the barrier options. Barrier style, gloss black, barrier width five, barrier height 30. All right, so with that, it'll look like this. Next, I'm gonna place a barrier while on top of the spawn area. Here are the options. Barrier style, blue force field, barrier width five, barrier height three. Next thing we gotta do, we gotta start from the bottom. And we're gonna place the barrier right here. Here are the options that work for me. Barrier style, blue force field, barrier width, seven, barrier height, 30. From the outside, it'll look like this. We gotta do the same thing on the other side. Same options. Once you're done that, it should look like this. So if your arena size dimensions is different, you're gonna have to you know, readjust the settings and shape the barrier so it fits. So our blue side, our barrier is now placed. We're gonna do the exact same thing, but you know, make it red on the other side. We're gonna take a floor, place it in the middle, right underneath the bouncer. We're gonna take the barrier, place it underneath here while facing the arena. In the options, here are the options. Barrier style, gloss black, barrier width, five, barrier height, 30. From the outside, if you did it correctly, obviously, it'll look like this. Next, on top of the player spawn area, we're gonna place the barrier down in the middle, 
same options as the other one. Only difference, barrier style will be different. Barrier style, we have it set to red force field because it's the red side. We have it set to red instead of blue. Barrier width, five. Barrier height, three. From there, it should look like this. All right, we're gonna finish up the barrier. At the bottom, same thing. We're gonna place it on the same side. Barrier style, red force field, barrier width, seven. Barrier height, 30. Same thing on the other side, same options. All right, so once you're done that, if you've done it correctly, it should look like this. So all the barriers look the same. Obviously, you know, the style is different. One side's red, other side's blue, but the shape is the exact same. Next, what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna make our ceiling. So you have a better idea like where the height limit is for our arena. Two devices, we're gonna select our hover platform again, and we're gonna place it in the middle of our map. Also, we're gonna line it up with our walls, showing where the top of our map is. Two devices again, we're gonna select the barrier device. Now there's actually two types of barriers. There's one here, and at the very bottom, you'll actually see another one. This is actually an old one, the barrier plate. We'll be using the new one, which actually has a little bit more flexibility. You can do more things with it. So select this. I'm gonna have this set to grid snap four. So it's centered. I'm gonna remove our hover platform. Here are the options for our barrier. Barrier style, gloss black, or pure black. It's all up to you. They, look, they both look pretty good. Here's pure black. And here's gloss black. So those are two options. Those are two styles that I recommend. If you want, you can obviously, you know, use different styles. What we're going to do next, we're going to, you know, continue building the barriers around our arena. We got a few openings and we're going to fill it in. Two devices. We're going to need more barriers. We're going to use the old ones. Now, in my perspective here, there's not really a middle wall. So we're going to have it off to the left. We're going to place down this barrier here. So it looked like that. And then we'll go into the options and change this. Barrier style, blue force field, barrier width 14, barrier height 30. Here's how it looks from the outside. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And same options. It looked like this from the inside. And from the outside, it looked like this. You know, you'll actually see the barriers and it's sticking out from the ceiling. That is no problem. We'll actually fill that in. Okay, with the rest of your barriers, you're going to actually fill in the red side. You're going to fill in the other side. And it's the exact same method, exact same options. Mm, there you go. So red side and then blue side. Next, what we're gonna do is make another row of barriers. So we'll go in the middle of our arena. We're gonna place the barrier here and make another layer of barriers on the outside of the previous one. Here are the options. Barrier style, gloss black, barrier width 30, barrier height 30. From the outside, it looked like this. From the inside, it looked like this. All right, so do the exact same thing on the opposite side and with the same options. Lastly, we're going to be underneath our spawn areas. Do the exact same thing with the other barriers. But in this case, we're going to actually copy the same options as the one in front of it. And we're just going to change the barrier style to gloss black instead of the force field. So this one here is 7 and 30 height. So go ahead and, you know, keep on placing the barriers down until you got all your, your sides completed. so once you completed that your map should look like this here's an option if you want to put you know a little bit more effort we're going to take our gloss floor from our galleries and we're just going to place it on our walls at the very bottom so once you're done it'll look like this if you don't have it there you'll actually see the bottom of your floor but yeah if you don't care about that you know it's not really a big deal you don't have to fill it in 
Alright, so the map is looking pretty good. Obviously, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of things you can't customize. A lot of things you can't personalize on this map. But you can do whatever you like. This video here is... It's it's a simple map, to be honest. Compared to other maps out there. Other Fortnite creative maps. There's not a lot of, you know, mechanic stuff going on. It's just, it's just a build. It's a type of build. There's something I'll adjust. I'll actually go through the barrier here on top of our player spawns. And I'll set this to gloss black. It looks a little bit better. And I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Alright, so last thing I'll do is show you guys the game settings for your game mode my island I suggest switching everything back to restart default and you know It's just in case you've changed settings that you had no idea about and just click on the restore defaults on every single tab So in the game tab your the options are gonna go through this as quick as possible just because I've actually done this like 10 times already on my channel but here are quick settings for a team game mode teams we're gonna set this to two because there's red team blue team time limit we're gonna set this to 20 minutes it's all up to you if you want to have a limit on this join in progress i'm gonna have a set the spawn settings i'm gonna set it to daytime as always 4 p.m starting shields 100 percent infinite ammo we're gonna have this on on building can destroy environment you want this to know Environment damage, turn that to off. Very important. Eliminated players items, set this to keep. Glider redeploy all up to if you want a glider, like a default glider. I have it set to off usually. Health granted on elimination, I'll set this to 50. Next tab, UI tab. Scoreboard win condition, eliminations. Scoreboard tiebreaker 1, eliminations. Scoreboard tiebreaker 2, damage dealt. Scoreboard tiebreaker 3, eliminated. Now that is your default settings for this game mode, a two team game mode. If you want to have like a game end function, what you can do in the game tab, elimination score, we're gonna set this to one. So anytime you get an elimination, you'll get a score of one for your team. Then if you scroll up, score to end, we're gonna set this, I'm gonna set it to 35 eliminations. So the idea is once a team gets 35 eliminations all together, the game ends and that team wins. And there you go guys. Here's some minor features. I'm on top of one of the player spawn areas. To go to devices, we're gonna select a team settings and inventory. We're gonna get two of these. We're gonna place both of them up here. For one of them, in team, I'll set this to team one. And the other one, I'll set it to team two. So we know that team one is our red team, this area here. So in our team settings and inventory, we have it set to team one. And we also have team color set to red orange, which is actually red and team name we're actually gonna set this to team red or red team all up to you then our second team settings and inventory team will be set to team two team color we set the sky blue for team two's color then team name we're gonna set this to team blue there we go now the reason for that is when you actually look into your scoreboard i'll show you what pops up and i'm on team red as you can see all right so this is my game mode we can go through the vending machines these vending machines are kind of floating, but, uh, you know, minor issue. You can go through your vending machines, choose whatever you like. Now, you can't build in this area. But once you boost down, you're able to build. Now, if you look at our map here, it doesn't look exactly like Advanced Red vs. Blue. I didn't want to use his design. Me personally, I don't really like how, you know, the people up top can shoot at the people at the bottom. So I made it so it's better for people to use the boosters and actually hit the ground first to actually get into a fight. But of course, you can design your map however you like. That is my design, you guys. What else are we missing here? Uh, we need a pregame lobby. All right, so on the outside, what we're going to do, we're going to build a quick pregame lobby. So I'm going to use our blue and red walls. And my pregame lobby size is going to be a 5 by 4 square. And use a gloss floor. I'm gonna copy all the walls. I'm gonna build it one more floor high. And then build the ceiling with the gloss floor. From the inside, it'll look like this. But main thing is for a pregame lobby, we're gonna go to devices, player spawn pad. Now, our player spawn pad will be a little bit different from the ones in our arena. So here are the options team none. Visible during game, no. Nope. Now the option visible during game, I don't think it'll make a big difference if you can't publish your maps. But either way, it's it's a good habit. Visible during games, no. Nope. With the player spawn, we're gonna need six entities for our pregame lobby. You can go ahead and place this wherever you like. I like having it on the outside all facing each other. 
All right, so I kind of lost count, but I know for a fact I had about probably 18 player spawns. Now to test out your pregame lobby, what you can do is back out to the hub, jump back into your rift, and then where you spawn is your pregame lobby. Now everyone's seen featured maps with pregame lobbies, you know, they'd have text in here and you know, they customize it and they'd have their, you know, socials and stuff like that. That is all up to you. You can customize that. I'll leave it up to you guys. Is there anything else? Uh, you know, there's obviously features that you can add to your map. Uh, maybe you can add a secret room. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to do that this video. If you guys want to see a secret room, a secret room idea where you can actually enter the secret room using gold. If you guys want to see that, make sure you guys smash that like button. Let's get to a thousand likes for this video. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this build. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments down below. Main thing is if you do run into issues, I suggest going through the video, pausing the video at any time if you need to. I'm going to go through my map one more time and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have a great day. Make sure you guys smash that like button button subscribe if you guys are new use code jack jack hd in the item shop if you guys do want to support me greatly appreciated i'll see you guys next time take it easy guys peace